Kilalanin ang mga industry associations na katuwang ng Department of Science and Technology sa pagpapalago at pagpapaunlad ng kanikanilang industriya sa tulong ng science, technology at innovation. Kilalanin ang mga industry sector representatives na sina Mr. Hector Villanueva, President, Philippine Dye and Mold Association, Ms. Senya A. Gabayan, President, Pallet Business Association of the Philippines, Mr. John David Soon, President, Packaging Institute of the Philippines, Mr. Earl Kwa, President, Electronics Industries Association of the Philippines Incorporated. Lahat ng yan at iba pang balita tungkol sa agama at teknolohiya sa bansa. Ngayon nagdaang linggo mula mismo kay DOST, Secretary Fortunato Boy de la Peña. Pakadutukan lahat ng yan sa DOST, DOST Report. Report. Tuwing biyernes, alas 4 ng hapon sa DOST TV Facebook page at YouTube channel. Magandang araw Pilipinas, Bermans na po mga kapatid at ngayon ang unang biyernes ng Setyembre, September 3, 2021. Maraming mga napapanong balita tungkol sa gam at teknolohiya sa bansa na naman ang hatid na sa inyo ngayong araw dito sa DOS Report. Ako po si Oning Miranda, ang inyong kapatid sa Mabawid at kasama po natin ang kalihim ng kagawaran na agam at teknolohiya ang nag-iisang DOS ni Sekretary Fortunato, Boy de la Peña. Maganda araw po, Sik Boy. Ang araw naman, Onin, at sa ating mga taga-subaybay. Makasama din po natin mamaya ang ilang industry sector representatives na naimitahan ni Sik Boy upang magbahagi ng kanilang mga gawain at kung paano nakatutulong ang science and technology interventions sa kanilang mga industry associations. Pero bago yan, pakinggan muna natin ang mga balita ng hatid ni Sik Boy. Salamat Onin at uh, gaya ng dati ay uh, magsisimula tayo sa mga balita tungkol sa kalusugan at kabuhayan. Ang uh, unang uh, balita ay galing sa DOST, Philippine Council for Health Research and Development at uh, ito ay parang pag-update lang na uh, yung kanilang proyektong Tuklas, Luni, Tuklas Lunas uh, na may, ay may marine component at uh, merong uh, Uh, dalawang uh, proyekto, itong uh, marine comp component na ito na sinasagawa uh, sa University of the Philippines Diliman Marine Science uh, Institute. Ang uh, unang uh, proyekto ay uh, uh, studies ano, about anti-pain and anti-neurodegeneration drug candidates. And this is being led by Dr. Arturo Luisma. While the uh, second project is... Uh, Uh, working on the discovery and development of anti-infective and or anti-cancer compounds from Philippine marine sponges, other marine microorganisms and their associated microorganisms. And this is uh, led by Dr. Lilibet Salvador Reyes. Uh, it is now, they're just giving us an update that it's now on its second year of uh, implementation. And uh, the major activities that have been done already are the following, although this is really uh, high-tech high uh, sounding. Uh, first is the optimization of large-scale synthesis and um, holding of priority peptides and intraplantar hypertonic saline assay. The other one is the sequencing okay, uh, of uh, uh, priority canoidian uh, species. The next one is the molecular docking and molecular dynamic simulation. Uh, the next one is the identification of priority, bioactive peptides and, and canopeptides, conopeptides for synthetic and recombinant production. And they also purified the three priority compounds. They determined the structure uh, for two of them. And uh, this is really for anti-proliferative and anti-inflammatory. Okay? And um, they uh, added the seven priority isolates that are ready for batch uh, sequencing, which will be followed, which has been followed by the optimization of electrotransformation of uh, two 
uh, this uh, two of this drug uh, uh, discovery uh, for uh, health uh, uh, priority bacterial isolates. Uh, so uh, sa aking pagkakaunawa dito sa kanilang mga in-report ay uh, uh, marami na silang na-identified na uh, bioactive peptides and phonopeptides na po pwedeng masynthesize. Okay? And uh, this will be uh, for uh, the uh, diseases that were earlier uh, mentioned. The second item is a report coming from uh, our DOST Region 1 in partnership with the DOST Food and Nutrition Research Institute. And uh, uh, this is a, about a uh, program that has been launched in cooperation with the local government units of Ilocos uh, Sur. So the uh, Region 1 of uh, the DOST Region 1, uh, through their, their Provincial Science and Technology Center uh, of Ilocos Sur, uh, in partnership with the FNRI, okay, and also in partnership with the Ilocos Sur Polytechnic State College and the North Luzon Polytechnic State College, has uh, launched a malnutrition reduction program in uh, 12 local government units. Uh, and uh, uh, this will be using the DOST package for the improvement of nutrition of young children. Uh, this took place uh, between August 19 to 27, uh, the training that has been carried out by FNRI. So uh, this is uh, involving a total 225 participants, uh, nutrition and health uh, workers, as well as midwives and nutrition uh, scholars. The, uh, this is part of the Community Empowerment through Science and Technology or CES program. Now we move to Kabuhayan and uh, the first report on Kabuhayan uh, is an update from the DOST Philippine Council for Agriculture, Aquatic and Natural Resources, R&D, or PICARD. And uh, they, they reported that uh, a total of 19 communities uh, involving 345 families benefited from Gulayan sa Pamayanan, which is an urban gardening project uh, led and organized by PICARD in cooperation with the DOST National Capital Region. So this project distributed urban gardening materials and uh, trained residents in Metro Manila on enriched potting preparation or EPP and simple nutrient addition program or SNAP hydroponics. Uh, the technology from this is from Dr. Eduardo Paningbatan Jr., a retired professor from uh, the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, as well as from Dr. Primitivo Jose Santos and Dr. Eureka Ocampo of uh, the Institute of Plant Breeding of UP Los Baños. And uh, the 10 communities that were assisted are uh, coming from, the, from Las Piñas, uh, from Paranaque, from uh, Muntinlupa, okay? uh, from, from Sampaloc, Manila, from uh, Pasay City, from uh, Marikina, and uh, also from uh, Nabotas. Okay, so these were the uh, LGUs where uh, these uh, communities are located. Uh, hindi ko na specify yung barangay. The next one actually uh, is a report uh, involving the Cradle Program, the collaborative uh, research to leverage uh, the economy. And uh, this is actually a uh, a program that was uh, supported by our DOSTP card. And uh, this is actually a project uh, which were a partnership between the University of Southeastern Philippines and uh, Tetra Consulting Company, okay? Uh, wherein uh, the technology for innovative poultry farm monitoring system uh, was developed, okay? So uh, this is the development of a system that will closely monitor potential outbreaks of infectious diseases uh, for poultry production uh, through this collaborative R&D project of uh, the University of Southeastern Philippines and uh, Tetra Consulting uh, Company. So it is a project entitled Chick based Smart Poultry Building Environment and Growth and Health Status Management and Modeling Things and Wireless Sensor Network Covering Thermal Environmental video and gas level data. IoT refers to a system of interrelated internet connected objects or devices 
that can collect and transfer data over a wireless network without human to human or human to computer interaction. So the data that are gathered are utilized through image analysis and application of computer vision techniques and algorithms in the cloud. So uh, the leader of this uh, engineer, Lorelia, is a, uh, a technology business incubator manager of the University of Southeastern Philippines. Okay? And he said that this project started um, as a Kabau IO, an IoT-based crop heat stress monitoring system fits during the higher education institutions readiness for innovation and technopreneurship heritage program of uh, DOST. Okay, now uh, let us uh, proceed to another Kabuhayan project and this comes from DOST Karaga. They have introduced uh, uh, value analysis and value engineering for machine shop operations. This is really intended to improve the productivity of our uh, machine shop operators you know, and uh, their business operations. So those Karaga, along with the uh, Provincial Science and Technology Center of uh, the Dinagat Islands and uh, of Surigao del Norte, as well as Surigao del Sur, they uh, introduced uh, uh, value analysis and value engineering techniques uh, through a virtual training uh, that they conducted on August 24th. Uh, the uh, training aims to capacitate the participants on value analysis and value engineering and to recognize the importance of the value functions of a product and services to maximize creativity and to reduce cost in their operations. The training was attended by 125 participants coming from various firms as well as from uh, state universities and colleges and uh, other set up adapters also from uh, other government organizations. The next uh, report on Kabuhayan comes from DOST Region 8 and this is also a virtual training uh, on label design and this was conducted uh, for our beneficiaries in uh, Biliran uh, uh, province. So, so DOST Region 8 through the PSTC Biliran conducted this virtual training on product label design that is intended for our uh, uh, beneficiaries of setup on the Small Enterprise Technology Upgrading Program uh, who are, are doing label designs and printing for local producers. So uh, this is really for better packaging of their products. And uh, 15 of the 31 participants um, okay, who joined the activity are actually uh, micro uh, entrepreneurs. Now, uh, another report from DOST Caraga involving Kabuhayan, and this time they trained 200 participants on sensory evaluation and customer acceptability. This is for uh, food, processed food the producers. So, uh, through their uh, PSTC or Provincial Science Technology Center in Surigao del Norte, they conducted a virtual training to introduce sensory evaluation and customer acceptability. This was held last August 18, 2021. There were 200 institutions uh, coming from uh, industries across uh, the country who joined the training via Zoom. Most of them are set up clients and uh, many are coming from uh, uh, national line agencies as well as uh, uh, from uh, the uh, uh, universities. Now, uh, uh, we have also a report, and this time from DOST Region 10 or from Northern Mindanao. Uh, this is actually their uh, uh, spearheading of a facilities extension program for the Northern Mindanao Food Innovation Center, uh, which is hosted by the University of Southern uh, Philippines, uh, University of Science and Technology in Southern Philippines in Cagayan de Oro City. And uh, this is uh, because more and more uh, micro, small, and medium enterprises are interested to expand and innovate food products from local sources. So uh, the innovation center there, the food innovation center, needs more space to accommodate and increase clientele. And uh, this will be uh, built by the University of Science and Technology in Southern Philippines. And that will be inside their main campus in Cagayan de Oro. Our city. It will be a joint project uh, spearheaded by DOST Region 10 or DOST Northern Mindanao and other stakeholders, including uh, DTI, uh, Fopanormin, 
and the office of the congressional district in the city. So owing to this uh, growing importance of this uh, uh, food innovation center, uh, so we have this uh, need for expansion of uh, facilities. Actually, since their establishment in 2015, the facility has already developed more than 100 innovative products and they have served more than 1,000 uh, MSME uh, clients. Okay. Now, still continuing on Kabohayan, this is a report of DOST Picard or the Philippine Council for Agriculture, Aquatic and Natural Resources Development. And this is actually a continuing program to assist the Bureau of Corrections. And uh, the project that they have now is entitled Assessment of the Technical and Economic Feasibility of Village Scale Chicken, Meat and Eggs Production System. Uh, this is led by the Livestock Research Division of Picard and uh, one of their projects under the link Picard contra COVID-19. So it started last July 1 and the said initiative is implemented in partnership with the New Believed Prison under the minimum security compound of the Bureau of Corrections in Muntinlupa City. The project hopes to develop a profitable and sustainable village scale meat and egg production system to ensure food availability within communities during these uh, health emergencies and calamities. So they uh, actually aim to set up and test the productivity, production efficiency and profitability of village scale broiler and layer chicken production system and produce significant volume of meat and eggs during the uh, nine COVID-19 post-lockdown period in Muntilupa City as one of the implementation uh, sites. Now, uh, uh, that is all for uh, Kalusugan and Kabuhayan uh, Onin. Uh, from here, uh, we will move on uh, to Kaayusan and Pinabukasa. Maraming salamat po, Sekboy. Maraming pang balita tungkol sa gamat teknolohiya ang ibabahagi sa atin. Lahat po lang yan sa pagbalik ng DOST Report. Para sa pagkakatuloy na ikalawang bahagi ng DOST Report, naratubong muli si Secretary Boy. Maraming salamat, Onin, at uh, itutuloy ko na ang aking pagre-report this time on uh, Kaayusan. At ito ay galing naman sa ating DOST Food and Nutrition Research Institute. Ibinalita nila na i-re-release na nila ang kanilang uh, ginawang publication entitled Risk-Based Inspection and Grading System Among Food Service Establishments at uh, two participating LGUs. The DOST FNRI already presented the results of the partnership between their institute and the participating local government units of Taguig City, as well as the municipalities of Tainta and Taytay Rizal in their pilot implementation of the proposed risk-based inspection and grading system among food service establishments. Okay? They also awarded the LGUs with the tokens of appreciation with certificates of endorsement and a copy of the three grading system tools. One is the food inspection checklist. The other one is the code of standards for food inspection uh, checklist and grading uh, of food, establish, food service establishment. And the third one is the operations manual for uh, risk-based inspection and grading system of food service establishment. Uh, uh, actually, this is really uh, for purposes of food safety and to inform the, the public and the customers of the grading system for the particular establishments that they are entering or patronizing. 
Now, uh, the other report, another report is coming from the DOST Industrial Technology Development Institute or DOST ITDI. Uh, this is just an update on their energy audit program. Uh, this time, they conducted their most recent energy audit uh, for Antipolo, Bacoor, and uh, Mandaluyong. Uh, this is part of the Government Energy Management Program or GEMP under Republic Act uh, 11285. So this is a, uh, a program a project of the Industrial Technology Development Institute of UST where they conduct a one-day energy assessments uh, for the city halls of Antipolo, for Bacoor and Mandaluyong cities. So this is really for the uh, buildings uh, owned by the uh, municipality which they occupy. The energy assessment involves random checking of office energy consuming equipment, measuring the building's electricity consumption, and interviewing the energy conservation officers regarding the uh, policies of the local government unit on energy conservation and efficiency. This assessment expects the team to provide a thorough review and analysis of the program to improve further the policies implemented and to identify additional energy saving opportunities for the local government units. Uh, historically, uh, malaki ang uh, nagagawang savings in, in uh, electricity costs after an energy audit is done and after the uh, owners of the facility implement the recommendations. Another DOST ITD I uh, uh, reported the project uh, actually uh, it's, it's really more of, uh, shall we say, a reintroduction of their facility which uh, turns industrial byproducts into cosmetics and pharma products. So this is uh, coming from the uh, ITDI researchers who are uh, working in their multi-industry manufacturing innovation center. Uh, in this part of their facility, they turn industrial waste into food, cosmetics, and pharmaceutical products. Uh, through their uh, new facility. Uh, so uh, they uh, make use of the raw materials that are actually byproducts for the commercial operations, which could generate new innovative products on food ingredients, beauty, nutritional supplements, as well as development of improved efficient uh, processes. So with the facility, DOST ITDI, in collaboration with industries, academe, and other stakeholders will make use of byproducts of commercial operations such as calamansi seeds, mango seeds, rice bran to high value uh, goods. So yung mga itatapon ng seeds o kaya mga balat uh, o kaya yung mga pinagsapalan, you know, pwede siyang pakinabangan pa for higher value goods. So our entrepreneurs who are interested here, you can visit our uh, multi-industry uh, innovation uh, uh, center, multi-industry manufacturing innovation center at the Industrial Technology Development Institute in Iputan uh, for uh, uh, a smaller scale of uh, production, particularly for test marketing, they can use the facility of ITDI. Okay? And uh, of course, uh, there are certain very reasonable fees uh, charged. Uh, from here, we shift to the last K, which is Kinabukasan. Uh, the uh, first report uh, comes from uh, our Science Education Institute. They have uh, conducted a three-year study uh, together with the University of the Philippines uh, College of Mass Communication Foundation in Diliman. And uh, this is uh, regarding uh, a three-year study on the attitudes of K-12 students towards science, technology, engineering, and mathematics subjects in schools. Okay? Uh, these early results, uh, which, which has been published in a report entitled Appreciating Science, a project on perception of science among uh, K3, Filipino K3 to K6 students in the Philippines were presented at a roundtable discussion last August 26, 2021. Okay? A survey of over 1,000 uh, grade school students across the country in the levels K3 to K6 uh, found that the children has a neutral to positive attitude, awareness, and knowledge of science, despite the subject's perceived difficulty. So either positive or uh, a neutral attitude, okay? Uh, there was no negative response attributed to statements related to science. 
uh, this is how the researchers um, reported. However, uh, focus group discussions found that students possessed only a shallow understanding of science, while most of them recalled terms that were taught inside the classroom, they did not know how to characterize, explain, and even relate this with one another, okay? They have difficulty, um, they have difficulty in absorbing science concepts and uh, thinking about them in creative and innovative ways. This was how the researchers reported. So the researchers also found that the students preferred a more learner-centered approach to teaching science in which they are encouraged to ask questions and to seek answers for themselves. They cap their preliminary report by underscoring the need for a more interactive approach to teaching of STEM or science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, of course, facilitated by competent and knowledgeable teachers, as well as parental support and using real world example. Now we move on uh, to uh, the report also of the Science Education Institute, wherein they announced the qualifiers to the 2021-2022 uh, Science and Technology Undergraduate Scholarships. The DOST Science Education Institute, or SEI, announced the qualifiers to the 2021-2022 as uh, DOST SEI Science and Technology Undergraduate Scholarship Program. Uh, this year's qualifiers include 3,815 under Republic Act 7687, which is uh, uh, a scholarship program for gifted students who belong to the economically disadvantaged families, while 4,252 qualified under the merit program. In the merit program, uh, we do not distinguish uh, uh, the social or economic status, but we just base it on their academic performance. The DOST SEI did not conduct the national scholarship qualifying examination uh, for this uh, batch due to the COVID-19 pandemic. They uh, employed data analytics tools and proxy indicators in place of the exam to identify the qualifiers. Okay, they are actually all required to render services in the country, preferably along their fields of specialization after graduation for a period equivalent to the number of years that they enjoyed the scholarship. The next report on Kinabukasan okay, uh, comes from our DOST in Calabarzon. Uh, they uh, actually have developed a courseware okay, uh, for uh, um, mathematics, Okay, for e-learning. And uh, this was conducted uh, for teachers, okay? Last, well, also, also students, you know, where there were 1,500 participants uh, held on August 27, uh, and they gathered around uh, 500 Zoom participants plus 1,000 Facebook users across the region. So the DOST courseware, is a locally produced and highly interactive multimedia educational resource package uh, developed actually by the DOS, the Science Education Institute, in partnership with our other agency, the Advanced Science and Technology Institute, or ASTI, as well as the Philippine Normal University, and uh, supported by the DepEd, okay, and the uh, UP National Institute for Science and Mathematics Education. Uh, after each session, participants were encouraged to ask questions and give feedback in the open uh, forum. Okay, so uh, this uh, event was reported by our uh, officer in charge of the regional director's office of Dos Calaborson, Ms. Emilita Bagsit, who encouraged the teachers in the region to integrate the courseware modules in their learning materials. Now, still on Kinabukasan, our DOST Region 3. Okay, uh, uh, specifically the uh, uh, provincial uh, office or provincial science technology center in Zambales, together with the city government of Olongapo and two private centers conducted robotics training and workshops to motivate more students into STEM careers. 
a series of line, online robotics trainings and workshops uh, for teachers was recently conducted okay, through the collaboration of uh, the agencies I uh, mentioned, okay, DOST, Longapu City Government, and uh, two companies named uh, A Plus Solutions Development Center Corporation, uh, Nerdvana Romania Private, Private Educational Center. Uh, this was the end. Uh, there were 10 Olonga City teachers that were, who were trained on the principles of algorithm, programming, line followers, color sensors, and iner inertia involving robots. The project aims to motivate more students to pursue careers in science and technology by capacitating them in the design of prototypes, building and testing machines, and robotics software development. Students will likewise be trained to conduct research and find the most cost efficient and safest way to manufacture robotic systems. As I said, uh, we do this also through their teachers who were trained in uh, teaching and training robotics. So the, the project includes okay, uh, kits that are uh, that would have programming computers, robot building kits, virtual robotics toolkit and sensor packages to facilitate the conduct of classes, workshops, trainings, and webinars, okay? Now, uh, another report under Kinabukasan, this is actually our very well uh, accepted and loved Starbucks. DOS is Starbucks, okay? Uh, went to our uh, Lanao del Norte municipalities, okay? Uh, to uh, put in place Starbucks units, okay? that were turned over to DOST Region 12 to, to be installed in four municipalities in Lanao del Norte, namely Tagoloan, Baloi, Matungao, and Pantar. Okay? All the municipalities are under the Convergence Areas for Peace and Development and uh, also identified as uh, geographically isolated uh, communities, GIDA communities. And... Uh, uh, it is expected that uh, 6,000 Muslim Maranao students will benefit from the Starbucks that will be installed in these four municipalities. Among the beneficiaries of this are uh, Tagoloan Integrated School, okay? uh, Malam Mat Mal Matampay Integrated School, Pantar Central Elementary School, Maria Cristina Emer Emergency Elementary School, Tagoloan National High School, Matungao National High School, Pantar National High School, and Baloi National High School. Okay, so either integrated school or national high schools. These Starbucks units can help teachers in making the dra drafting of modules for both science and math. Okay, uh, classes or courses. Meanwhile, students can still access Starbucks during module distribution. And uh, uh, we have a report uh, still on uh, Kinabukasan coming from the DOST Philippine Textile Research Institute. Our PTRI actually has posted advocacy on the use of neo ethnic Philippine textiles in academic regalia. So, officials and technical experts from the DOST uh, Philippine Textile Research Institute or PTRI led by uh, Director Celia Ilumba, expressed support and provided inputs to the deliberation of measures in House Bill 9732, an act prescribing the use of neo-ethnic Philippine textiles in the academic regalia of all state universities and colleges. Okay? The measure aims to provide an opportunity and distinguish graduates of all Philippine universities and colleges wearing academic regalia that is notably Filipino, okay? Uh, Neo-ethnic textiles are made of and or contain indigenous materials and are produced in the Philippines using updated, relevant, and green scientific and technological approaches and innovations. Neo-ethnic textiles also integrate and or retain traditional patterns, designs, icons, motifs, and or approaches, and thus contribute to livelihood generation, sustain local handloom weaving, and conserve textile heritage. The bill is part of the advocacy of DOST PTRI 
uh, which then Senator and now Deputy Speaker Ligarda took into consideration since the completion of the DOST Technicum funded neo ethnic Philippine textiles project way back in 2013. Uh, still in Kinabukasan, uh, we have a report from uh, DOST shared that they are supporting the development of a prototype for collaborative storytelling peer, okay? Those featured, or the Philippine Council for Industry, Energy, and Emerging Technologies, R&D, is extending support to a team of researchers led by the De La Salle University uh, Associate Professor Isel Ong okay, of the Software Technology Department to develop a prototype for the collaborative storytelling peer called Orsen, which aims to leverage artificial intelligence with conversational interfaces to provide humans with more convenient ways to interact with artificial intelligence system. Orsen is a chatbot that can be deployed through Google Assistant or Google Home as a voice-based chatbot as well as through Firebase as a text-based chatbot. Professor Ong said that by exchanging statements through a continuous dialogue, the child can create a story collaboratively. It can also prompt children to narrate new events, describe various story elements like characters and settings, and ask for specific details like color and size of the objects and even add their own story text. The other report comes from NRCP, the National Research Council of the Philippines. Uh, we, uh, are, we know that they are conducting expert classes uh, online and this time their expert class tackled what we call the power of data. The power of data was the focus of NRCP's express class episode conducted last August 25, 2021. Uh, the resource person was Dr. Richard Gonzalez, uh, who is an NRCP regular member and uh, a chief executive advisor of InnoChange International Consultants. Uh, he highlighted the power of data and how it can be appropriately used for decision-making, especially in schools. He also shared the data-driven decision-making or D3M framework and highlighted that data and information can be maximized to support student development and school improvement. There were 321 and Rollies who joined the lecture, including NRCP members, DOST agencies, as well as students and teachers from different schools uh, and universities. Now, uh, uh, we have uh, a report from DOST Technology Application and Promotion Institute, or TAPI, and uh, this is about their uh, uh, launch, okay, uh, which they held on September 2, 2021. They, uh, they, together with SM, launched the hybrid exhibit of DOST-supported products and technologies in selected SM Super Malls. The DOST Technology Application and Promotion Institute and SM launched this nationwide promotion and exhibit of DOST-assisted science and technology products and technologies in selected SM Super Malls. The project will um, enable wider dissemination of information on available technologies and encourage the adoption and commercialization, particularly from our micro, small, and medium enterprises. The last report comes from our International Technology Cooperation Unit. Okay, and uh, this is about the participation of the Philippines. Okay, in the APEC Policy Partnership on Science, Technology, and Innovation. This was held last August 25 to 26, 2021, wherein the Department of Science and Technology exhibited its strong and continuous commitment and support towards innovating and capacitating scientific frontiers through multilateral cooperation. So the meeting's focus is on building resilience in science, technology, and innovation systems for post-COVID recovery and future shocks. The meeting also served as a good platform to introduce this year's Aspire Prize winner, which is an Australian public health nutrition scientist whose works 
incorporates indigenous knowledge of local foods and food cultures with innovative technology approaches to food production systems that have increased accessibility of healthy and sustainable foods to vulnerable populations, okay? So uh, some points made were, number one, the importance of global uh, research and an effective collaboration with the science, technology, innovation, international community. Second is that the present crisis requires innovation and innovative means. And the third one emphasized the need to have a more sustained science and technology investment following the global value chain for a sustainable X system. Of course, uh, the last one is the important role, important role of digitization in a new uh, in our uh, new normal. Okay. So these are uh, the uh, items I would like to report uh, covering our achievements. Uh, uh, the recent uh, weeks, and particularly during this uh, week, covering the four case, Kalusugan, Kabuhayan, Kaayusan, at Kinabukasan. Maraming salamat, Onin, at sa lahat ng ating taga-subaybay. Maraming salamat po, Sekboy, sa aming pong pagbabalik. Makakasama na natin ang mga representatives ng Industry Association Partners ng DOST. Mga kapatid, something big is coming. Sa susunod na Martes, September 7, 2021 ay lulunsod na ng Department of Science and Technology ang Big 21 in 2021. Tapok doon ang 21 Technologies Research and Projects at flagship programs ng DOST. Narito po ang aming pasilip para sa Big 21 in 2021. Kaya po'y nakatutok sa DOST Report, ang DOST ay sumusuporta sa mga industry sectors sa iba't ibang paraan. May it be on the implementation of programs and projects intended to increase product or service, competitiveness, invest in human capital development, and promote science and technology to enhance innovation. At sa punto po ito ng ating programa, ay makakapunayin po namin ni Secretary Boy ang mga representatives mula sa Industry Association Partners ng DOST. Makapanayin po natin si na Mr. Hector Villanueva, President, Philippine Dye and Malt Association. Ms. Senia A. Gabayan, President, Pilot Business Association of the Philippines. Mr. John David Soon, President, Packaging Institute of the Philippines. Mr. Earl Kua, Electronics Industries Association of the Philippines Incorporated. Uh, siguro umpisahan na natin ang kwentuhan with our invited guest. Ang uh, una nating uh, panauhin ay si Hector Villanueva uh, ng Philippine Dye and Mold Association of the Philippines. So, 
Uh, Hector, maaari bang ikaw na ang magpakilala kung ano itong Dye and Mold Association of the Philippines at siguro banggit ti mo na rin bilang pangulo ng uh, asosasyon na yan, ano ba ang iyong uh, vision para sa asosasyon at para sa industriya ng Dye and Mold of the Philippines? So, I'm Hector Villanueva po, no, ng uh, current president ng Philippine Dye and Mold Association. So, I would like to just give a brief uh, Uh, information about the tool and dye. So, so marami hong hindi nakakaintindi, what's tool and dye? So, uh, the tool and dye is uh, actually, is a support group sa manufacturing. So, everything you see around us, uh, yung mga ginawa dyan, so yung mga tool, yeah, yung mga anything from ball pen, paper, or anything, lahat po yan dumaan sa tool and dye. So, Tool and dye is not a very popular industry, but it's a support group, a very vital uh, industry that supports the manufacturing. No? I'll just give you an example ano, how tool and dye works. Okay, a piece of paper, when you cut it with the scissor, the tool there is the scissor. Sir, pinaka basic, no? very, very simple. But it goes way, way back to the most high technology uh, things, kagaya sa, sa mga cell phones, yung, yung mga pag-cut ng mga, mga uh, ICs or everything, yung mga frame, yung mga housing. Yung, it all passes through the tool and die. So uh, what I'm saying is it's very vital itong industry na to, but it's not the popular one. Yun lang. Pero what we're trying to do with our association now, is to promote our industry kasi ang laki ng, ng uh, ano namin, uh, requirement namin sa tool makers, sa mga dye designers, dye makers, mga ganyan. But I can tell the people, you know, the young ones, that uh, you can make tool and dye a career path. Okay. Maraming po salamat. Sa inyo pong palagay, sir, Paano po makakatulong ang mga science and technology interventions para maisakatuparan ang inyong vision para sa Philippine Dye and Mold Association? At ang DOSD po bilang pangunang ahensya ng pamalaan na nagbibigay ng mga essence interventions, kamusta po ang collaboration po ninyo sa DOSD? We have a lot of collaboration with DOSD. We do a lot of uh, trainings on the mold and dye, no? Uh, as I've said, uh, wait, anyway, sa 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 academ there's only one school that's teaching tool and dye so yan yun na uh, TIP so wala na dito na ano wala na ibang schools na nag nagkikeri ng tool and dye na course no so to to cover for that we do we made up a lot of uh, trainings na regarding sa mold design sa mga ano and we tap yung mga local suppliers mga software suppliers, ganyan. And we do a lot of trainings. Libre po lahat yan. That is with coordination with with the DOSG at BOI. So we we post our ano, on our website, on our uh, Facebook page, we post yung mga schedules na mga training. Ganon. And we welcome everybody to join. And para maintindihan ng mga bata kung ano, what's tool and die. Ganun. And what's happening now. Actually, we're, we're pushing talaga yung mga trainings na yan eh. Kaya nga libre. In fact, we had a, ay, ano, yung D2M2. Yeah. Uh, ito siguro, may tanong ko lang. At very relevant yung diniscuss mo tungkol sa expertise. Uh, so sa tingin mo, ano ba mga klase ng uh, expertise? Uh, siguro lalo na yung medyo nasa higher level ang uh, kailangan natin ngayon at maaaring uh, kailanganin pa in the future ano, para mapaghandaan natin. Yeah, uh, we have a we have a plan, ano, na to get uh, uh, experts from abroad uh, to to get them or as a uh, trainers. We 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 already at the past we got the Japanese for this uh, tool and dye trainings, kenyan. But hindi uh, pwede yung isa lang. Eh. We have to do it continuously. Eh. Yeah, so. So we need the experts from abroad na medyo maiba naman yung yung technology nila na may papasok sa atin. Pero actually, 
Sir, ang dami magagaling na Pilipinong toolmakers eh. Uh, mm-hmm. Ang dami sa abroad. Actually, dito sa Pilipinas, ang dami rin. The problem with the industry right now is uh, our competition with the, with abroad, with the other countries. No? So yun ang mabigat namin ano, uh, problema. Because we do not have the volume here ng, uh, ng uh, trabaho, kaya they go out sa ibang sa ibang bansa and they buy there. Ganun. Actually, kaya naman yan dito sa Pilipinas. The only problem is a turnaround time sa... Let's, let's, be, let's be specific. It's China. No? China, napakamura at napakabilis. Ganun. Although, kaya din dito sa Pilipinas. Gawin yung mga ano na yan. But for some reasons, I don't know bakit hindi nag-ano uh, dito sa Pilipinas. Actually, some of the tools that were made in China ay eh, kami rin na nagre-repair, kami rin na nag-aayos. Pagdating dito, testing nila, nagkakaproblema. Sa amin hindi naman tumatakbo para for repair or for, for revision dahil hindi nasunod yung mga ganon. So, uh, if they can only trust yung mga Pilipino for their uh, requirements, eh, malaking bagay yun. So, yung, uh, what I'm saying is we have to continue training sa ating mga uh, tao so yung skills development that's very important ganun and we have to encourage talaga the young ones to join the industry ganun all right thank you salamat po Mr. Hector Villanueva president of the Philippine Dye and Mold Association susunod naman po ay si Aisy Misenya E. Gabayan president of the Palette Business Association of the Philippines maganda araw po Misenya Magandang araw din sa iyo, Onin at Tisha Gregory Boy. Sumasamahan natin ngayon. Senya, maaari bang ipakilala mo sa ating mga taga-subaybay ang uh, nature ng uh, Philippine uh, Palette Business Association? At uh, siguro kung pwede mo ding i-share bilang uh, Pangulo ngayon itong asosasyon na ito, ano ang vision mo para sa asosasyon at sa industry? Opo, um, ang Palette Business Association of the Philippines ay isang non-profit organization na nakaregistro sa SEC at binubuo ng mga private corporations na primarily engaged in the palette business, whether sa pagmamanufacture, sa trade or service providing. Service providing meaning po, ano yan, ang magpaparenta po sa mga malalaking pakita ng mga palenta. So ang aming mission is to be the governing institution of the palette industry in the Philippines. Uh, our mission is to develop unity, goodwill, understanding, and cooperation among the four major palette industry sectors existing in our economy. Um, we are continuously promoting and educating the public on the usage and advantages of our palettes. Kasi po, um, highly uh, used ang mga paleta sa ating logistics and transportation sector, lalong-lalo na sa mga pabrika that, um, that yung nag-handle ng maraming mga materyales. So, yun po. Um, we want to contribute um, to the enhancement for better business climate sa ating bansa. Uh, we are also committed to uphold existing policies of the government and support all endeavors that will help protect our environment. Kasi po, um, maraming gumagamit, uh, gumagamit ng paleta, ang uh, gumagamit ng materialis ay kahoy po. So, so very supportive po kami um, sa mga endeavors ng ating gobyerno na magpatektahan din po ang ating um, uh, environment. Right now, we are actively coordinating and representing our country with, with the other um, international talent associations in relation to technological advancements and global use and distribution of talents. In fact, for the past um, at least uh, five years, I've been representing the com- the, 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 the industry uh, and our association is a um, Asian association. Um, Palette Federation Association. So, every year, nagkakaroon kami ng cooperation and exchange of ideas um, in terms of standardization. Pati na rin po yung paggamit, yung nagsicirculate na paleta sa business all over um, the, the region. So, 
most of the time we 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 we, we interact with um, the associations in Japan, in Korea, and um, China. So our vision is to have a globally competitive Philippine-made pallets and effective pallet programs that will support the changing needs of the global economy, especially that we are in uh, in nasa industrialization phase. Tayo. So yun po yun ang aming nga mga um, advocacy system. Okay. Isa po sa layunin ng Pallet Business Association of the Philippines, maturuan po ma'am ang mga pallet users at makers ng mga new developments at technology sa pallet industry. At kapag usapang science and technology, alam po natin ang DOST ang naungunang ahensya ng pamahalaan para dyan. Kamusta naman po ang nature of collaboration po ninyo, Ms. Senya, sa DOST? Ay, opo. Um, magan napakaganda po ng collaboration ng, ng PIBA at uh, DOST through Uh, FPRDI. In fact, um, our members have been actively availing the technical consultation services at testing services ng FPRD, FPRDI. Kasi po, hindi lang kami basta-basta um, nagbubuo or nagmamanufacture ng mga paleta. In fact, um, most of the industries require um, testing kung, kung gano'n po siya katibay, kung, kung gano'n kabigat ang kaya niyang ikarga. So, yung yung yun, yung mga services na yun, at saka kung paano namin i-design, ginagayad kami ng FPRDI sa, sa aspeto nito. And hindi lang din doon, but actually we've been um, endorsing also our clients. Kung maga hindi lang yung member namin, even yung mga kliyente namin, um, magda-direct consultation na sila with FPRDI who are, uh, dahil um, syempre gusto nilang makabuti yung yung and maprotektahan din yung mga produktong nakapatong sa mga paleta na to. No? So, yun po. Um, another one thing uh, na, na, na magandang collaboration is um, the FERDI developed um, its own uh, wood moisture testers na widely, widely um, ginagamit talaga ng mga uh, 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 pallet manufacturers. At in fact, sa, sa aming company, we think, I think we have a big more than 10 units of these moisture testers. So, napaganda niya kasi it, it was developed para specifically para sa mga wood species natin kasi yung ibang nasa market, naka-design naka siya sa wood species abroad. So, yung ginawa ng FTRDI para talaga dito sa atin sa Pilipinas. And lastly, at isang um, napakagandang collaboration was we have availed the FTRDI skill dryer design. So, sa, sa company namin, dalawang, dalawang chambers yung pinatayo namin. And both of them are designs from FPRTI. So, ang ganda ng ano namin, yung, yung collaboration. Kanya, uh, oh. sa, sa tingin mo, anong uh, klase ng uh, mga human resource technical skills or expertise ang uh, kailangan ng industriya ninyo o kaya ay maaaring kailanganin pa sa hinaharap? Opo. Um, um, meron po actually, um, especially ngayon na hindi, to be honest, hindi po ganun ka-popular ang woodworking um, woodworking skills sa ating mga kabataan. So, um, in the future, and right now, talaga, especially with the millennials, kailangan ng aming industriya ang woodworking or wood processing skills training and development. Hindi lang naman para sa aming mga empleyado, I think it would also benefit sa mga gusto ding magpumasok sa sa wood industry, uh, um, either manuf uh, manufacturing of any wood product. Napaka- napakagandang programa nito para sa sa uh, sa atin. So, yun po. Um, this, this, if we can develop some some, some professionals or we can up, parang upskill our, our current uh, manpower skills in terms of wood processing, napakahalaga po nito, nito sa amin. And makakatulong din ito kung meron na din kasama mga advanced technology application or parang development of parang simple machines. Although we're using machineries now, medyo you know, medyo mas maganda kung maaya-upgrade din natin ito through the help of DOSP para naman tumas yung kalidad din ng aming mga produkto doon po. All right. Maraming salamat, Ms. Senya Gabaya, ng President ng Pallet Business Association of the Philippines.
Sa punto po ito, mga kapanin naman natin ang current president ng Packaging Institute of the Philippines, Mr. John David Soon. Magandang araw po. Magandang araw din po, Sir Onin. Alam mo, Onin, ang Packaging Institute of the Philippines ay noon pang 1967 itinayo. At ang mga miyembro nito ay nanggagaling sa mga uh, users, uh, manufacturers or producers, at saka dun sa mga uh, suppliers ng uh, packaging uh, materials. Um, siguro, uh, Mr. Soon or John, ay uh, mabuti pang ikaw na ang magpakilala uh, o magpaliwanag sa ating mga pinasubaybay kung ano ba ang ginagawa ng Packaging Institute of the Philippines at kung ano ang iyong vision para sa uh, asosasyon ninyo at sa inyong industriya. Thank you po, Sir Fortunado. So, ang Packaging Institute of the Philippines is, uh, sabi nyo nga po, um, founded on 1967 and was registered on 1975 uh, by the FTC. And we're members of the World Packaging Organization and also the AF APF, which is the Asian Packaging Federation. So we're, and also the Packaging Institute of the Philippines is uh, recognized by the government and also includes mass uh, packaging professionals and also companies that is conscious about packaging and also develops packaging for the industry. So the current the current uh, members here are manufacturers, suppliers, and users of, of packaging materials. Now, our foremost goal is to improve, of course, the, the country's packaging or the the packaging knowledge and also the to improve packaging throughout siempre um with that what is packaging packaging is to protect of course our product from external damages or to, to make sure that it does not damage the food or actually any other any material to make it make sure that these products went to went to uh, when it gets to the customers it's still protected you know, po yung pinaka-goal ng isang packaging. And for our association, which, kumbaga, collective goal natin to improve the country's packaging. Di ba po? Maraming salamat po. Alam po natin, uh, Mr. John, na napakalaga ng science and technology intervention para po sa packaging industry. Maaari po ba na niyo ibahagi ang nature of collaboration ng Packaging Institute of the Philippines at ng DOST? Ano po yung mga proyekto at naging bunga ng collaboration na ito? Our relation with packaging as, uh, since 1999 nga, uh, we went through the PDT, which is the Packaging Technology Division. So we helped also to organize that with DOST. This was September 24, 1999. So, wait, ano ba? 20 years, almost 20 years. <laughs> Ay, 20 years na nga, labas na. And also, uh, with this, we also, we had a showroom, which is the National Academy of Science and Technology, NAST. And this was in 2002. And uh, we also had uh, um, help with the OSP with establishing a packaging course in CPU in Iloilo, which is providing um, kumbaga, education for packaging. Kasi, um, actually, before then, before I did not know, there was a course for packaging to improve our country's knowledge with packaging. Imagine nyo, um, there's a course already that is given to our students for them mm -hmm. to improve on our packaging. Um, kasi yung packaging, it always continues to develop. So we need to make sure to encourage our young uh, our, our students to, of, of course, uh, dapat pag-aralan nila because we're protecting the product, which is, for example, food. It's very important to us for us to live. So um, without uh, th those packaging, that's very important. Na, di ba po? Because of the food, we need to protect it. Next, mm -hmm. we had also in, last, actually, 2019, uh, before the pandemic, we had an ASEAN packaging conference. Uh, we also partnered with DOST with this, which is the first ASEAN packaging conference uh, held 
here in the Philippines. And we also help DOST with inviting some um, networking with packaging sim in the symposium, providing um, speakers and, of or, or course, in organizing also. So, um, yun naman po yung mina, uh, currently na partnership namin. Also, we provide pala, um, we invite, of course, the members from PDT, like Ma Ma Daisy, to go to our events, also to speak um, regarding their new developments in in research with yung mga po, yung mga po, yung mga testing na importante po sa atin na para make sure that our packaging is properly tested, um, lalo na mga new development, and also it's kung nakako, naka properly, uh, properly, ano siya sa, kumbaga sa current, current market, kumbaga, kumbaga, uh, kumbaga pasado siya sa mga test. Like the EPV before, um, which is that for the environment, making sure that uh, the packaging that we use uh, before, because it's a plastic, we have an EPV to make sure that it's properly that they degrade, lalo na yung oxo degradable plastic. Example lang po yun. Uh, thank you, uh, John David. You know, siguro may tanong ko lang. Uh, are there particular uh, human resource? Uh, technical uh, skills or expertise that uh, uh, you need in that business or uh, which you think you will be needed in the future? Um, it's more, um, kahit na yung, actually yun na nga yung, po yung pinag-usap ko kanina, like the packaging technology course na um, USD helped us with, actually yun nakatulong na po yun. Siguro it's more, more schools lang to have more students in the packaging. Kasi um, before, um, ngayon, Kumbaga, very scarce yung packaging. Very sought after po ang mga packaging specialist. Siguro, um, one thing that the DOSD can help with, siguro, yung pinaka... Kasi ngayon, um, we had also... Alam ko, may bagong development yung DOSD, which is the Stimulating Packaging Testing Laboratory, which is the groundbreaking pa lang. I think, uh, 2000... 2019 to 2020 yata po eh. Pero because of the pandemic, kaya medyo siguro na-delay. And also, I think the green packaging uh, green packaging laboratories that is being developed by DOSD. So, yun yung dalawang new current na development with DOSD na I think could really help uh, with uh, siguro prob, um, more schools nga, more packaging course, plus yung, yung bagong itong uh, new testing laboratories and hopefully, um, lalo na yung mga ina-export natin goods. Sana, um, kasi yung problem ngayon namin as an industry, it's more of the, uh, yung mga certification, hindi pa ino honor sa ibang bansa. So, we hope na siguro we can help also DSC and DSC can help us na sana this can be honored na para hindi na mahirapan po yung mga organization here to get certification from the other country. Uh, siguro yun yung pinaka-basic. Uh, All right. Maraming salamat po, Mr. John David Soon, President of the Packaging Institute of the Philippines. At yun naman po, kasama po natin, Mr. Earl Kwa, ang current President ng Electronics Industries Association of the Philippines, or IAPI. Magandang araw po, Mr. Kwa. Magandang araw din po sa inyo, Onin, Sekboy, at sa kasamahan natin ngayong araw. Thank you for having us. Onin, ang... Uh... Electronics Industries Association of the Philippines Incorporated or IAPI ay itinatag noong pang 1986 ng uh, isang uh, grupo ng mga young Filipino entrepreneurs sa electronics business. Layunin nila na maipromote ang paglago at pagunlad ng electronics industry sa Pilipinas. Earl, ano ang um, mga gawain ng IAPI at ano ang vision mo para sa IAPI at para sa uh, electronics industry? Opo, sagpoy. Ang YAPI ay isang industry organization ng mga kumpanya at individual na nagde-design ng mga electronic products. Ang aming layunin ay ang pagtataguyod ng, at pagsusuporta ng mga Pilipinong electronic product designers. Sa aming palagay, kinakailangan na pumasok ang Pilipinas sa ekonomiya ng intellectual property. Kung saan tayo nagde-design, nagmamanufacture at gumagamit ng ating sariling mga produkto. At siyempre, inaasahan namin na maka-export din tayo sa ating mga, ng ating mga original products 
sa iba't ibang bahagi ng mundo. This is in line with our partnership between YAPI and DOST ASTI where YAPI manages the operations of the Electronics Product Development Center or EPDC. Maliban sa EPDC, nag organize din ng YAPI ang aming mga regular kapihan kung saan kumukumpul namin ang community of Filipino electronics developers upang pag-usapan at ipakita ang ating mga produkto, mag-compare ng best practices, at mag-present ng iba't ibang electronic components na maaaring gamitin ng mga engineers. Uh, paminsan, nag i rin kami ng mga international professors at kumpanya for training and upskilling ng ating local industry practitioners. That's why nag-sign kami ng collaboration agreement with Taiwan's uh, National Federation of Industry. Nakikipag-meeting rin kami with Taiwan's uh, Indus Industrial Technology Research Institute or ITRI, uh, which is uh, isa sa pinaka-respetadong technology institute that incubated billion-dollar corporations like Taiwan Semiconductor, MediaTek, uh, Foxconn, at marami pang iba. All right. Over the years, sir, IAPI ay kinikilala ng pamalaan at ng ibang uh, industry players pag nating po sa sektor ng local electronics industry. Kamusta naman po ang nature of collaboration po ng IAPI at ng DOST? Ano po mga proyekto ang naging bunga ng collaboration na ito? Opo. Uh, nabanggit ko kanina yung EPDC. Ito ay isang development center ng DOST ASTI sa Bikutan na maaring mag-design, uh, mag-prototype at mag-test ng mga electronic products. Ito po ay isang ISO and FCC certified laboratory na ang resulta ng mga test ay kinikilala ng FCC sa Estados Unidos. Sa loob ng EPDC, may kakayahan mag-design at uh, ng iba't ibang mga electronics products. Uh, ang Breath Simulator ay isang halimbawa ng collaboration between YAPI EPDC and the DOST kung saan gumawa kami ng isang aparato upang itest ang mga medical na ventilator sa Pilipinas. Dahil sa COVID-19, maraming mga lokal na kumpanya na uh, nagsimulang mag-design ng kanilang sariling mga ventilator. Ang breath simulator ay isang makina that can test the ventilators. Kaya may base na ang mga ang DOST at DOH mag-certify at makasiguro na ang mga ventilator ay ligtas at mabisa para sa paggamit ng mga pasyente. Uh, ang breath simulator ay isang halimbawa ng napakaraming produkto na na-design na Uh, na prototype at na test sa EPDC. Maraming eskwela, uh, maliit at malaking kumpanya ang gumagamit ng world-class facilities ng EPDC. Nais naming pasalamatan si SecBoy at DOST sa kanilang suporta sa EPDC. It is, it is a critical resource to support locally designed electronics that will expand our capabilities in electronics manufacturing within the Philippines. Maraming salamat po for your support. Alam mo, Onin, uh, gusto ko lang idagdag na uh, ang uh, ibang miyembro ng Electronics Industry Association of the Philippines or IAPI ay nagsisilbi din sa amin sa DOST bilang mga uh, members ng aming technical panel okay? na usually ayan ang mga nag evaluate ng mga proposals, uh, mga research proposals, uh, lalo na yung mga isinasubmit sa aming Philippine Council for Industry, Energy and Emerging Technologies, R&D, uh, para ma-evaluate yung mga proposals na coming from uh, academe, from uh, industry, and from the government uh, research uh, institution. So, uh, talagang uh, ikaw nga, eh, mutual, ano, mutual uh, help ang ginagawa namin. Uh, well, siguro, uh, may tanong ko lang, uh, ano bang mga klase ng technical expertise ang inyong mga Uh, kailangan at uh, maaaring kailanganin pa kasi ito yung maaari namin pagtanuhan sa aming uh, Human Resource Development Program sa DOST. Opo, opo, uh, sa teknolohiya, lalo na sa panahon ng Internet of Things or IoT at uh, Artificial Intelligence or AI, uh, which serves as the foundation for Industry 4.0 or even 5.0, uh, nakikita namin ang convergence ng iba't ibang mga disiplina. Uh, nakikita namin ang pangangailangan para sa isang baseline na pag-unawa ng software, hardware, and data science uh, ng ating mga engineers. Uh, it's what we call full-stack uh, engineers. No? Uh, nakikita rin namin uh, ang kahalagan ng experience ng pagiging engineer. Uh, the more you practice designing, uh, the better engineer you become. Uh, unfortunately, maraming engineering graduates na nakatapos ng college 
ay dumidiretso sa mga position ng IT admin, call centers na there's nothing wrong with that, pero hindi na practice ng pagde-design. Uh, we should explore uh, the development of maybe vocational programs, pati, pati na rin ang mga potential for uh, OJT programs, kung saan maaring ma-practice ng mga engineers ang kanilang pagde-design. It is one thing to know things in theory, it is quite another to do things in practice. So who knows, hmm. uh, baka pwede natin gamitin ang EPDC bilang isang facility to give our students a chance to gain more design experience and build up their product design track record. All right. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Earl Kwa, President of the Electronics Industries Association of the Philippines Incorporated. Sec boy, baka may mga nais pa kibabatid sa ating mga panuhin at mga taga-subaybay. Uh, siguro, ang masasabi ko lang, ang napakahalaga ng partnership ng ating DOST, aming mga ahensya at ng mga uh, industry groups na nire-represent ng mga industry associations. Ano? Uh, Unang-una, yung sa aspeto ng pagpapataas ng productivity ng ating mga industriya, ng ating mga enterprises, uh, sa pamamagitan ng mga appropriate na technologies na pwede nilang magamit. Ano? Uh, yan ay binigay na halimbawa kang ina, disenya. Uh, yung iba naman ay talagang mahalaga dahil aming technology transfer activities ay uh, magagawa lamang kung uh, meron tayong mga kakolaborate sa mga industry uh, associations. Mas mapapabilis ang uh, technology uh, transfer. So halimbawa, in the case of the um, uh, Electronics uh, Industry Association, uh, maraming mga teknolohiya na pwedeng ma-develop through R&D na pwede nilang uh, ma-adapt towards commercialization. Okay? And uh, yan ay nakikita na natin sa case ng uh, IAPI. At uh, meron din namang mga collaborative research na pwedeng uh, isagawa. Ano? At uh, alimbawa, yung ating mga uh, ginagawa sa uh, Dye and Mold uh, Association, actually, yan ay... Uh, uh, meron na talagang collaborative research na sinasagawa. At uh, in fact, we go beyond that. Ano? Uh, Dye and Mold at ang uh, BOST to our Metals Industry Research and Development Center ay nagpursige na magkaroon ng uh, uh, mold uh, technology, Dye and Mold Technology Center at yan ngayon ay tinatayo na sa Rosario Cavite sa loob ng uh, PESA Zone with the help of the Korean uh, industry association. At uh, siyempre, yung generation of innovations ay uh, napaka-importante at uh, uh, makikita natin yan dahil halimbawa sa packaging ay napaka-importante na makaisip ka ng mga innovations, lalo na yung uh, masolve yung mga problema na uh, hinaharap ng ating mga uh, producers, manufacturers na nangangailangan ng mga packaging. Kaya kailangan kailangan ng innovation. Ano? At uh, dyan din mahalaga yung uh, uh, sinabi kangina ni John David na uh, we really have to uh, uh, have more uh, programs, ano? yung mga teaching, training, and even academic programs uh, para sa mga packaging uh, specialists. So, ang dami nating pwedeng uh, magawa at uh, kami ay uh, talagang uh, sinisiguro namin na maging uh, relevant naman at attuned to the industry sector yung aming mga uh, ginagawa. Dahil alam naman namin na aming mga ginagastos ay uh, uh, perang nanggagaling sa ating uh, pamahalaan, galing sa bayan, kailangan magamit yan the maximum benefit of our people. And usually, yan ay nagiging nangyayari through our uh, uh, enterprises and uh, industry. So ako ay nagpapasalamat. Uh, Pinaunlakan tayo ni uh, Hector, ni uh, uh, John David, ni Senya at ni uh, Earl para dito sa unang uh, uh, episode ng ating pag interview sa mga uh, industry partners ng uh, DOST. Maraming salamat. Sa aming pong pagbabalik, sasagutin namin ni Secretary Boy at ng ating mga panauhin ang tanong ng bayan. Magbabalik po ang DOST Report. Oras na para sagutin ni Secretary Boy ang tanong ng bayan. Para po sa unang katanungan, mula po kay uh, Dina Diaz, Central Luzon Media Association, at Jennifer Cruz, Radio Aguila Net 25. Bukod po sa mga nabagit na tulong mula sa DOST, 
sa anong paraan pa nakatulong ang DOST S&D intervention sa inyong mga kumpanya at sa inyong mga manggawa lalong yung panahon ng pandemya? Apo, bali actually um, we, the, the, yung, ang aming industry at work are in fact hindi kami tumigil ngayon because we've been serving the ex 80%, the expert, set, the expert center is hindi naman po sila tumigil. Hindi rin po kami tumigil. In fact, yung that, um, uh, diretso pa rin po yung aming collaboration. Right now, may mga nakapila kami testing um, this, uh, new palette designs for testing pa rin sa, 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 uh, with FPR. Yun po. Uh, yun po ang activities namin ngayon. Maraming po sa lahat, ma'am. Ito'y tanong mula naman kay Donis Bravo, Philippine Association of Press Club Incorporated. Ano po ba ang proseso na gagawin ng isang kumpanyang kasapi sa organisasyon ninyo para maging isang business partner ng DOST? Ang tanong po ay para kay Mr. J. John David Sue. Naman is just to apply uh, for membership uh, I mean association. And of course, um, we will consider it and we'll check of course kung anong part siya of our organization na pwede siyang mali. So, nila naman po magsamali. Just submit an application at our secretariat or our website. All right. Maraming po salamat, sir. Uh, tanong mula kay Tim Gonzalez ng Today Online Blogspot sa panghuli. Mayroon pa ba kayong ibang hiling sa DOST para matulungan ng lubusan ang inyong mga kasaping kumpan ang tanong ay para kay Mr. Earl Kwa. It, it's uh, important na with that we can promote uh, locally designed capabilities and uh, let let uh, everyone know that um, the Filipino can do it uh, because uh, it is not uh, you know widespread that um, there are capabilities and engineers within the Philippines that can design original products. Uh, we would like to promote uh, initiatives that uh, that that help uh, forward that. Uh, that um, uh, process and so uh, yes uh, if we can um, promote the design the Filipino designed um, uh, Philippines not just uh, made in the Philippines but also designed in the Philippines as well. Muli po maraming salamat sa boy at sa ating mga panohin mga kaibigan abangan nyo rin po ang Bantay Vulcan ting Martes o Webes at expert ang online ting Merkules alas 5 ng hapon kasama si Jen Miranda sa DOS TV Facebook page at YouTube channel Mas marami pang balita mula sa mundo ng siyensya at teknolohiya ang ating pag-uusapan. Kaya tutok lamang kitong biyernes alas 4 ng hapon dito sa DOS TV Facebook page. Ako po si Orin Miranda. Ito ang mga balitang may kinalaman sa siyensya at teknolohiya para sa bawat Pilipinas straight from the SNT Authority ng Bansa. Ito ang DOS Report.